Hi, my name is Sergio Coda and I work alongside Andrew Thiranaigam as a specialist gastrointestinal endoscopist and clinical research fellow between the Department of Physics and the Department of Medicine at Imperial College London. My specialist interests are early endoscopic detection and treatment of early stage neoplastic um, lesions throughout the gastrointestinal tract. My research is based on the clinical translation of novel biophotonics techniques such as fluorescence lifetime imaging and spectroscopy uh, into the clinical practice. The aim of this review is to provide a practical interdisciplinary overview of the state-of-the-art advanced imaging technologies available for clinical use that are impacting the way that precancerous and neoplastic lesions of the gastrointestinal tract are currently detected and characterized at endoscopy. It embraces evaluation of all available modalities, those in day-to-day -day use as well as those under experiment and identification of directions for future investigation. The basic instrumentation and the physics behind each method, followed by the most influential clinical experience, are described. Particular emphasis is given to currently available techniques that are still research-based and need consolidation, such as autofluorescence imaging and confocal laser and the microscopy, rather than to those already widely implemented in the clinical practice. One role envisaged for some of these techniques is a red flag guide to potential areas of malignancy, reducing uncertainties for both the endoscopist and the patient and reducing the time, cost and number of diagnostic biopsies taken. In this respect, the combination of current techniques as well as the integration of future potential optical imaging modalities such as fluorescence lifetime imaging microscopy is anticipated. This information might help guide future studies in this field and aid the development of more accurate, uh, lower cost and faster instrumentation. Although multiple reviews have been previously described on this subject, they are mostly limited to the upper or lower gastrointestinal tract, whilst this review tries to cover both and utilizes a multidisciplinary approach to explore how each technique works. I therefore feel that this review represents a useful, concise but exhaustive contribution to the existing knowledge on the subject. Over the next few slides, I'll briefly walk you through the various unmet clinical needs and the currently available advanced imaging modalities that are described in our review. Gastrointestinal cancers account for a quarter of worldwide cancer mortality and their incidence is rising. They provide the most um, compelling um, indication for our studies. These are the main still unmet clinical needs in gastrointestinal endoscopy. As you can see, dysplasia in Barr's esophagus, early stage neoplastic lesions, including early gastric cancer, flat polyps, and flat and elevated dysplasia in inflammatory bowel diseases. Occult foci of adenocarcinoma have been found associated with up to 40% of high-grade dysplasia after esophagectomy. The current standard method for detecting dysplasia in patients with Barrett's esophagus is a random four-quadrant biopsies protocol, but dysplasia can easily be missed as only a small fraction of the Barrett's segment is sampled. Also, what light endoscopy cannot distinguish intestinal metaplasia from dysplasia or other types of metaplasia not at risk of malignancy. The endoscopic appearance of early stage cancers such as early gastric cancer consists of minute changes such as faint mucosal irregularities or discoloration which can be easily overlooked and apart from Japan only 10% of gastric cancers are detected at an early stage in most of the world. Polyp miss rates up to 
25% during colonoscopy have been reported, as well as as interval cancers despite regular surveillance. In addition, aberrant crypt foci, which have been proposed as one of the earliest stages of malignant transformation, and flat polyps, which are characterized by a high malignant potential compared to sessile and pedunculated polyps, are too subtle to be visualized with the standard white light endoscopy. Dysplasia and malignant transformation represent the most important complication in patients with IBD. One of the major challenges and problems faced by clinicians is the histological finding of dysplasia in random non-targeted biopsies of diffusely inflamed mucosa as well as of microscopically normal mucosa and not in those targeted to a visible lesion. In recent years a range of innovative techniques have been developed and adapted for clinical endoscopy with the aim of addressing these unmet clinical needs. Some of these methods enhance and optimize the inherent conscious available while others offer the possibility of assessing the tissue structure real-time at a microscopic level. The outline of this review is organized according to a proposed practical goal-oriented classification based on that by Tajiri and Miwa ratified in 2008 so to give the reader a clear message on which technique is best suited and exploited for screening and detection for characterization of both. Various optical approaches are being investigated for their potential to provide an in vivo label free optical biopsy to aid diagnosis of gastrointestinal cancer. Amongst these, fluorescence lifetime spectroscopy is an attractive technique for clinical use as it can be developed into a real time adjunct for endoscopic examinations. Previous proof of principle work by our group using wide field flim at 355 nanometers excitation on surgical specimens of colon cancer, left image, and confocal flim at 420 nanometers excitation on endoscopic specimens of colon cancer, right image, showed that the fluorescence lifetime of the neoplastic tissue was consistently longer than that from surrounding non neoplastic tissue. In a bid to translate fluorescence lifetime technology from the bench to the bedside, our group has developed and assessed a compact single point fluorescence lifetime probe system generating excitation at 375 nanometers and 435 nanometers to efficiently excite main endogenous fluorophores, and further research is currently ongoing. Finally, I would like to thank all the funding bodies for supporting our endoscopic research projects and I hope you will enjoy reading our review.